I'm Zoltan Bruckner and the founder and managing partner of Primus Capital. Uh, we are a typical early stage venture capital investment company focusing on the Hungarian technology sector and we are investing up to four, four and a half million euros per company over a three year period. Our mandate is to, to find potentially fast growing, uh, ambitious entrepreneurs and fast growing companies um, and help them realize their, uh, their potential, their export potential and their uh, market potential. At Primus Capital, we have uh, five partners and um, uh, two analysts who are helping us evaluate the transactions. And we have uh, two professionals working in Germany uh, and Austria respectively, who are also helping the companies uh, network and get in touch with the markets. Because uh, one of the most important things uh, that a venture capitalist does is to connect companies with, with their markets with the right customers, uh, with the right strategic partners, and potentially with exit partners as well. So this is, this is very much our role. And it is in this role that uh, we know each other with Imre, uh, who is an experienced uh, financial professional and also a um, member of our advisory board uh, supporting our portfolio investments. Yeah, so my name is Imre Hild. Um, my professional career started at uh, Lehman Brothers on, uh, on Wall Street in New York. Um, then in 2003, I came home, uh, founded um, Hild uh, Life Annuity, which is a uh, real estate for life annuity company. It's a very innovative um, uh, structure here in Central Eastern Europe. Uh, when an installment, uh, when a company pays an upfront up, upfront fee and an installment payment to uh, to a pensioner in exchange for the title of the apartment. So I, st I started that company in 2004, uh, then I split off and I started another one under the name OTP Life Annuity, which ran until the end of 2008. Uh, that industry um, right now is about a 50 billion foreign uh, industry. Um, 2009 and 2010, um, I focused on mobile internet companies, partly investing in them and uh, partly uh, helping managing uh, these companies. Actually, that's what um, um, most business angels do. They focus on one particular area. Um, they, they pick the right companies. They either invest, they either only invest, or invest and advise and guide uh, the company and help the company with their, with their contacts. Uh, so that's what, uh, actually that's what I'm doing right now and um, going on bigger and bigger projects. In many ways, we are the next stage as investors after the, the private investors, yeah. the angel investors come in. The angel investors help us uh, like a compass to, uh, to orient us toward companies that have potential, uh, but they don't necessarily have the resources to fund the company for the further uh, expansion. Um, angel investors typically come in when there is an idea or a prototype of a product uh, whereas the, the venture investor comes in when there's already a company, uh, hopefully or ideally uh, initial sales, um, not to mention even profits. So uh, while an angel investor would invest in, in, in a very much of a startup scenario, um, ideally a venture investor uh, invests in an operating company. That doesn't exclude uh, the option of starting a company together with the founders, but uh, that is not the, the primary scope of the, uh, the venture investors. Our, our focus is to take the companies to the next stage. And the next stage means that um, the company develops the product to a market ready uh, a mass production uh, level. And uh, we would support the company somewhat in the development of the product, of the original product certainly fund the mass production and the preparation for the for the large-scale uh, market production and uh, and support um, the sales and the marketing effort uh, support the uh, uh, the management team with mid-level managers uh, financial management and other uh, members of the management team that that may not be necessary at an earlier stage in the company but when when there is a uh, uh, a larger market to to uh, sell to when there are international uh, sales processes going on uh, there's a need for a corporate structure 
And I think the venture capital investor brings that kind of structured operations uh, to the company, uh, would advise uh, almost like an in-house uh, counselor or, or advisor, consultant, um, to help management uh, find the right uh, managers, as well as create the right reporting structures, including financial reporting, operational reporting, and as well as planning uh, in the company. For, for the future. Yeah, what, what Zoli, Zoli actually explains is a is an investment ready company. It's ready to, ready to take the investment. It has the right structure. Where people understand what they are doing and what the investor is doing in the company. Um, for smaller projects, typically that's the um, that's the watershed. That's the breaking line. That's how actually some some VC companies uh, reject uh, um, applications that they are too small. But they actually are saying it's not ready for an investment yet. Uh, the, 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 the size, the scope, and the, the preparedness of the company is not ready. That's typically the, the area where angels come into play. Um, and the angel, what angels actually do is that they take their professional experience, they look at the team um, or the entrepreneur himself, and make a judgment call that this guy is going to stick around for a year or two and will see this uh, project to fruition. Or we'll just try to walk away with the money, and that's that. That that also may happen. Um, that's risk. That's what we are prepared for. But at the end of the day, the angel, what the angels are doing is they are they are closest to the market. They see these opportunities pop up, and when when an opportunity is beyond their you know preparedness or their size, that that's when they they actually contact you know their uh, their well known uh, VC. Uh, partners and, and tell them that hey here's an opportunity for you guys and it goes vice versa when somebody you know uh, tries to uh, be funded by a, by a venture capital firm and it's too small or not prepared yet then that's when that's when angels come into play but it, the, the the advantage of, of, of angels is not only money it's contacts and it's uh, affiliation that if uh, if a small IT company is affiliated with a uh, with a well-known star in the IT market, I'm just, for example, I'm talking about IT, yeah. that sort of gives, in, that implies that that particular um, high-profile personality thinks that that particular team and that idea is going to take off. That's sort of a marker mm -hmm. in the marketplace. Uh, the minimum is zero. Um, <laughs> zero? Yeah, <laughs> I, take, I take zero, um, that's, that's fine. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, it sometimes it, it sometimes actually helps a company if you don't only if you, if you say you know don't give me money, just connect me with the right people and the right places. You know, and all all entrepreneurs know how difficult it is to get in the door, to get to the top of a company who could be the who could be the buyer of a particular uh, technology. That's what angels can do. They are very they are typically very well connected in their in their own environment. And once they, once they stand behind a, a project, a particular idea, then they are going to invest by giving their face to the company and say, hey, you know, I'm going to you know, invest two or three hours of my time and try to introduce this idea to that, to that company. That's also a form of investment. It's not only, it's not only money. But talking about money, you know, it's up to, as Zoli mentioned before, it's up to like $50,000 know, that, that, that anybody would venture to, uh, to bet. On, on one particular entrepreneur, and once once that fifty thousand euro is uh, fifty thousand dollars spent, you see if it if it's worth putting more money into it, or or cut the losses, or actually push it on to a to a VC fund. It's a it's a sort of a touch and go kind of kind of game. I think the venture firms are somewhat more pressed to invest the funds that they have, while a private investor may decide to to invest or not to invest. Uh, venture firms have the mandate to invest within uh, a certain period of time um, a certain amount of funds and it's part of their their performance criteria that they do invest that and invest it properly so there's a lot of pressure uh, on the venture firm to find those investment targets um, and for us uh, it would be within um, a three-year period uh, we would be investing up to 12 to 13 uh, companies or so um, a total fund size at the moment is approximately 25 million euros and uh, we would 
invest ideally about one and a half million uh, to two million uh, euros per company. So that is the the average size of the investment. That is that's not necessarily the, the full size of the investment. We can go up to four point five million euros, and we can invest as low as maybe a half million euros. But um, uh, for reasons of this time pressure and uh, certainly the the will to uh, invest the full amount in the fund, uh, we cannot invest in very small companies or very uh, we cannot make very small investments and have many many of those. We have these economies of scale that we have to work with. So we imagine that the average size of the investment would have to be about one 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 point five million euros. And I think it's also true what 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 Imre mentioned that. Um, Venture investment is not for every company. Uh, it's mainly for companies who are not only looking for funds, but that they're looking for something else as well. And the definition of the something else is quite, uh, quite wide. So it can be management know-how, uh, network of contacts, uh, company building experience, um, exit uh, type of uh, experience, and so on. So each company and each manager has different needs and uh, they have to find the right investor for them. Uh, but I think uh, somebody who's only looking for funds and then uh, send a monthly report uh, to the investor is looking at the wrong place. I think both the angel investors as well as uh, classic venture capital investors are quite hands-on in their style and, and they try to influence um, in a positive way the development of the company. and. Um, certainly prevent the company from making the same mistakes as uh, some of the companies they know or have invested in have already uh, made. It depends. So just like the company value, uh, our share percentage depends on the uh, uh, on the amount of cap on the amount of capital the company needs and on the return uh, we are trying to to realize. So it, it really depends uh, on a case-by-case -case basis. Uh, typically, and without going into the technicalities of, of uh, uh, valuation, uh, we would take a larger share in higher risk earlier stage companies where uh, certainly the risk but also the, uh, the need for further amounts of funding is, is there, uh, where the dilution of the investor is uh, to be uh, expected. Then we would take a larger percentage. Uh, in more mature companies where the company already had one or two rounds of funding. We would come in as maybe in the second round. Um, certainly the risks are lower. The um, expected rate of return is lower. And we would not take such a, uh, such a high percentage given the valuation mm -hmm. being, being somewhat higher and the amount uh, correspondingly um, uh, lower. So Yeah, it's, it's a very tricky question and a very tricky uh, situation because if you take more than 50%, uh, well, immediately the entrepreneur will think that he starts to work for you, um, and that that's not good. I mean, the entrepreneur should be should think of himself as as number one. Um, so, and, and if you take seventy percent because you have good negotiation skills and you you take two thirds or seventy percent of the company, sooner or later it will end up um, that the entrepreneur will start to think of a different project as his project, and this project is going to be your project that he works on. And that's not good. So typically, um, my take is somewhere around the third, 30, 40% max. Um, I always want to, want to make the entrepreneur feel that I'm there to help. He's doing the major work. I'm there to help, and, th and that's, that my help is sort of uh, um, compensated accordingly. I think that 30-40% uh, with, um, with uh, no, operating, not, no operational input is, is, is still decent and that's sort of acceptable uh, from the entrepreneur's point of view. They are very afraid of giving away the company, of course. Mm -hmm. And I would, I, I as an entrepreneur, I would have never taken on an investor at 50 or more percent, no way. I mean, I just, I would just go to work for a company. It's easier. Uh, and that's, 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 that's my philosophy. And you know, if you, if you take too much of a chunk and the, and the entrepreneur is giving it up, why is he giving it up? Is he that? Is is he? Uh, does it show how committed he is, or does it show how desperate he is for the money? So, 
it's easier, it's, it's, it's better if they are fighting you at, at 30% or 35, one third, that it matters to them, that, that business matters to them and gonna, they're going to stick with it. There's a, there's a conflict of interest here uh, in terms of the investor wanting to invest as much as possible because his job is to uh, put those funds to good use and to good work. Um, on the other hand, um, the, um, the owner, founder, uh, would like to have some degree of certainty, which, which says more funding is better than less funding. On the other hand, um, certainly does not want to give up uh, full control of the company, leading to the demotivation um, in case of, uh, especially in case of uh, less than optimal performance of the company. So in that case, uh, the investor has to invest uh, a higher, uh, a larger amount, an additional amount, um, and, and would, would dilute the, the founder even further. So leading to a, a further loss of the motivation. So uh, taking a very big chunk of the company, uh, while it may seem, seem attractive uh, initially, uh, has a lot of risks. Um, partially because it makes entrepreneurs perhaps more comfortable than they should be um, and secondly there's the downside aspect of, um, of uh, the demotivation. So what we uh, very often use is a staged uh, investment whereby we would uh, divide the investment in two or three chunks, uh, two or three stages and uh, these stages are performance related and each stage, at each stage we would buy an additional share in the company. And it's not necessarily uh, the case that we have to invest even the third stage of the funding. The option is there for the entrepreneur to call it in case the performance is there. But uh, uh, we, could, we could also bring in another investor at a higher valuation, resulting in a lower dilution of the, uh, in the, the founder manager. There's, there's usually a very, very interesting and puzzling question that I pose to the entrepreneur when they come to me for, uh, for funding. And that's a very simple question, why? Why do you need the money and why do you need that much? And 80% of the time they don't have a good argument why they need the money and why that much. They come up with all kinds of reasons. And you know, I don't want to buy a company, I want to invest in a company. Um, that's two di those are two different things. Um, and, and very often they don't, they don't really see the, 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 the difference. So. Uh, what I advise to young, young entrepreneurs, first think really, really carefully how much money you need, then think again. Do you really need that much money? Because that much money is going to translate into that much, giving up that much control. And, and if they understand the relationship between the two, I start to feel better. If they don't understand it, usually they ask for a lot of money. That's, that's the end of, at, at the end of the day. And you know, I don't want them to spend my money for no good reason. Actually, a big part of our role is to, to determine the, the optimal level of funding. Yeah. And we work on the business plan, which is really a starting document when it's sent to us. So we look at the business plan as a, as a good start. The more you show up in the marketplace, go to conferences, go to meetings, you know, you know join those communities that, uh, that sort of uh, where these ideas float around and where new New teams can join in, and they, they find out where the uh, where the sources of capital, know-how, experience, whatever comes from. They they naturally navigate towards you, or if they don't, then someone will, will recommend, hey, why didn't you you know write an email or get in contact with this and that. Mm -hmm. Again, that that typically happens you know based on the size of the potential investment, which pretty much is based on the current size of the idea, the current size of the company. Well, I, I think that's a question of definition of succeeding and, and, and uh, certainly failing. <coughs> it's a 10-year uh, long fund. So. It's a 10-year long fund. And uh, when a, uh, there's a saying that uh, it's quite a short time to find out which ones are the, the definitely not performing ones. Uh, but it takes a little bit longer to, to find out which ones uh, will be the, uh, the good ones mm -hmm. so, and, and the great ones. Certainly. So within about, uh, after about two years, uh, you will know which, which company is, is likely to, to be sold at, a, at the multiple that you imagined uh, at the beginning. Um, out, of, out of our current um, 
seven investments in the portfolio. Uh, we have one company that we had to sell at a, at a severe discount. And uh, we have one company that is um, a relatively slow performer. Uh, and we have um, four or five companies that are making their business plans that are going, going very, very fast. So, and there are a couple of uh, startups, if I still haven't run out of the seven. Uh, there are a couple of startups that are just in the development phase, so we, we don't know. Um, uh, there will be time to sell some of these companies in the portfolio. I think some of them are in this, at the stage where they can already be uh, exited over the next uh, one or two years. Um, one of the companies in our portfolio is just receiving a new round of investment from another VC firm, and that's a valuation event. So we can see an actual uh, price tag put on the company, and we see where we entered the company and uh, at what uh, value the company is now at. So that's that's certainly a nice uh, uh, paper value, so to say, of, of our uh, efforts. But the real uh, value and valuation of the investment comes at the exit. Everything before that is speculative. Absolutely. And then when it comes to angels, it's even more speculative because we are we are before the uh, uh, the VC the VC environment. So uh, actually, I agree with Zoli. Uh, it, it, it's interestingly, it's time that very often uh, is the is the main indicating factor um, uh, what uh, what will uh, will turn out to be successful. Not not that you know I'm, I'm not talking about waiting. Uh, for the for the success, but uh, uh, retrospectively, I think that if I if I say that um, if I went with my guts, with my first instincts, those were the best decisions. And the more I the more I analyze, the more I think about it, the more I try to reason with myself, the worse the result. Well, the first the first impression, the first instinct. Uh, obviously, the first instinct is not one meeting. I'm talking about maybe two or three months. Uh, when when the dialogue you know starts to develop, but if the, the longer it drags out, the worse it gets, um, and 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 you, and you still and you still invest, um, then it turns out that that was uh, that was typically a, a, a mistake. But I think that that the, the biggest I think the biggest um, 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 strength of of anyone dealing with startups is the ability to tell the good ones from the bad ones, um, and looking for those signs, and of course there are no perfect. Uh, startups, no perfect applicants for that, uh, you know, for investment. But you know, picking the, the the critical, the critical elements. That's I think the the, the key issue. Yeah, I think um, following up on that, there are the formal elements of analysis. <coughs> Management team being complete. Is there a CFO? Is there a head of sales? Is there a CEO? Uh, is there a large enough market? Is there a growing market? Is there a product or um, product, will, will the product be ready within X amount of time, usually within six months or eight months? Um, is there a, a go-to-market strategy, a marketing plan? Uh, is the business model sound and so on? There are the formal, formal elements that are part of each and every business plan. And, and um, as I mentioned, this cooperative process with the investor, which lasts a, a few weeks, from a few weeks to even a few months, results in a business plan that gets these formal criteria right. So it's thought through, the numbers are there to the best of our knowledge. But the real criteria is, is the, this uh, um, difficult to analyze area of the uh, psychology of the investor. Because uh, these are very small companies, uh, usually, um, up to a few dozen people where the management team and the, certainly the head of the company has an enormous impact. Uh, his daily performance has an enormous impact on the, on the company. And we invest in his ability to, his or her ability to navigate uh, the company on a short term basis, reacting to opportunities as well as uh, defending company from various risks. So other than the business plan, which we can finalize and, and uh, think through, um, but also then uh, forget and put in a, in a drawer, uh, the most important thing is, is this uh, ability and business intelligence and, pers intelligence and personal integrity of the investor to guarantee that uh, they'll be able to uh, swim with the sharks or go with the changes and make the business survive.
Really, it can be as, as short as a month, in my case, and it, as long as, I don't know, two years, <laughs> almost, yeah. Yeah, we, as I mentioned, we have the, the time uh, pressure uh, factor here, uh, in which uh, ideally we would close an investment within three months. So from the initial contact, um, there is a basic monitoring or it is a basic due diligence uh, of the company's uh, prospects and the management team and their background, uh, followed by an, an informal decision on our part to go with this investment or provide um, a term sheet offer to the company or not. And then uh, if that decision is a yes, then uh, we would go ahead and, and analyze the company even further. Uh, we would have our analysts um, and partners uh, use their networks to uh, to understand the market and the company further. We have several meetings with the company and throughout those meetings and analysis uh, we would create a term sheet uh, which is a, an offer for funding and that offer includes our uh, estimated value or valuation of the company, the structure of the investment, certainly the amount of the investment um, and also some of the legal protection that we use for uh, for the uh, for what is normally a minority uh, position in the company. So we would try to, to avoid that uh, once we uh, put the money into the company and the company would take a direction which we did not uh, uh, previously agree with. So we would have certain rights to um, uh, rights for consent or right to veto uh, that would uh, uh, enable us to, to control uh, the direction of the company based on the business plan. So that, what I must add to that yeah. is that um, just as, as Zoli explained that how you know their their uh, the partners have to discuss among themselves whether they whether they want to invest. That's a very good pooling of expertise that each of them you know have different uh, professional expertise and they can add. Uh, in case of an angel, it's it's one head that makes the decision and makes the analysis, and that's why angels talk to each other a lot and very often invest together. Um, in teams, two or in in two or th in, in in groups of two or three, because the point is to succeed, not to you know su succeed alone. Anybody who is most of the angels were entrepreneurs before, and they understand that they can't do it alone. They have to have a team, even even an informal team, who just you know you know pulls together for one particular project to to, to chip in uh, and share the risk, but also to share the experience and ex expertise of those of those angels. I think it's uh, it's a very cooperative um, exercise, not only the investment uh, evaluation process, but then later on also the uh, the building uh, of the companies to, uh, to another level. So uh, the companies are are facing different types of challenges, uh, market challenges, management challenges, financial uh, obstacles, and to solve all of those, um, a venture investor would have to uh, align or align themselves or cooperate with a lot of advisors and people who have seen similar situations, who know people who have seen similar situations, and uh, even people who can jump in and help um, to, to turn around the company. Uh, very often, small, medium-sized companies, venture-funded companies are in a permanent state of crisis, even though it's not called a turnaround situation. Um, the, the time uh, available to develop the product uh, to conquer the market is so short and the intensity of the changes is so uh, so high that, that, that you need uh, all these uh, different uh, pairs of eyes and, and knowledge to, uh, to have an impact on the company. So that's, I think, uh, one of our roles to, to bring in the right people to talk to for the entrepreneurs and help them grow faster and grow more securely. In my, in my case, I would say that uh, the entrepreneur has to know his stuff. Um, I shouldn't know more about that particular business than he does. Uh, I shouldn't, you know, give him information that he was not aware of. Uh, he should know his comp competition, his market, and we have a very clear business, uh, business model why that particular business is going to make money. Mm -hmm. And also, I would say to be open to suggestions. Um, there's another uh, big mistake an entrepreneur can make is, is to pretend that they have all the people uh, on the team and they're all perfect and also that they have the answer to every question. 
I think it's okay to ask. And it's okay to say uh, we've been solving a certain uh, situation or uh, uh, covering a certain area in the company uh, today in a way such as um, I've been doing the financial management and accounting myself, but uh, I should not be the person to, to do the cash flow planning for the company. A uh, professional manager is needed. Um, same with any area of the company. I think such an openness to cooperation or um, support is, is most welcome uh, at, a, at an investor's uh, side. Um, another thing entrepreneurs, uh, another thing investors don't like to hear is um, that the entrepreneur would not like to sell the company uh, or would certainly not like the investor to sell their share to an external party. Um, the entrepreneur would like to buy back their share. Um, that's not the optimal scenario. Uh, that is the, the pessimistic scenario for an investor to exit a company. So when we um, invest in a company, we are hoping to find a high market value uh, for our share, uh, which means that most likely uh, the entrepreneur won't be able to, uh, to cover that market value unless he had won the lottery in the meantime. So uh, that's sort of one aspect of it. But the other one is that we are looking to create a value for both the entrepreneur and ourselves. So the idea is to, um, to make money together with the entrepreneur and to create that value uh, over the medium to long term uh, for both parties. Uh, there should not be a, a, a conflict whereby the investor wants to sell their share and the, uh, the founder would like to keep their share. Uh, for life. So that is not what venture investing is, is about. We are um, enabling companies to grow fast, to grow in stages, uh, but we should never exclude the opportunity, uh, if it comes, that we would sell our share uh, to the market. And certainly that is our goal as investors. Angels and VCs, they are looking for entrepreneurs. They are not looking for one idea that one entrepreneur can do. They are looking for entrepreneurs to whom the passion is to build a company based on an idea. Uh, I'm sure that you guys heard of the, uh, of the expression serial entrepreneur. That's what it is. Uh, when an entrepreneur goes from one company to the next, founds another one uh, and builds that up to a certain point and then moves on. Uh, it's not a marriage. It's a, it's, it's a business and, and that's what, that's what the, all investors are looking for. That he has, he or she has a sort of a, a calm, you know, calculated look at the company that okay, this is how we how fast we can grow it, we can grow it, and maybe at, at X stage we can sell it to um, you know one of the you know gigantic competitors, or maybe we can actually just as a strategic sale uh, we can we can sell it sell it off in the in the local marketplace, but he is not wedded to the company. He is just uh, the engine that is that actually helped grow that particular company, and that is the best scenario because then. Obviously, the investor and the entrepreneur is going to have a lifelong relationship in, in building companies. I think uh, entrepreneurs can look at us as enablers, people who are here to enable them to reach their goals. Uh, that doesn't mean that we will make it happen or that we would come up with the goals. So I think uh, entrepreneurs coming to an investor uh, would have to have a clear goal where they have to be personally or with their company and also have that iron determination to solve every challenge on the way to get there. So we will not solve it uh, while we are involved. Uh, we don't have the capacity or, or the, uh, the experience to actually uh, manage that company. We are in different business. We are investors, so certainly partners, strategic partners for the long term, and uh, supporting the company in their in their process. Uh, but I think the goal and the the willingness and ability to realize those goals uh, lies with the entrepreneur. That said, uh, we provide the fuel uh, to make it happen. Uh, all entrepreneurs should have a team should have a crystal, crystal clear focus, which is more difficult to get than, than it sounds. So have a team, have a, have a very clear focus, be open, uh, open to change uh, the original plan, change the original team, and have perseverance. And if these, these are there, uh, you don't really need money most of the time. Uh, in these days, so many things are free, and so many things are uh, available 
at a very, very low cost that competence and perseverance, determination is the most valued resource. So you have that, if you have that, you, you will not be stopped.